Hi there guys, welcome back to Rounds Tech Hub and in this video we're looking at Active Presenter 8. It's a program created by a company called Atomi or Atomi, however you want to pronounce that. And they describe it as the all-in-one screen recorder, video editor and e-learning authoring software. Now this is a video I use, this is a program, sorry, I use on most of my YouTube videos. It's completely free. It allows you to record in full HD with a separate microphone, your webcam and it and as it says here, it allows you to actually edit, um, bearing in mind, very basic edits. It does allow you to edit videos and export them without needing to use a separate video editor. So quite useful. Let's get started. basic idea of what Active Presenter is. Let's go ahead and actually download it. So this is the home page here for Active Presenter. I will paste this in the description below, but you simply have to Google the term Active Presenter. I can show you guys how to do that. So Active Presenter 8, search for that. And it's gonna be that first link there. You're gonna click on download here it's going to take you to the page to download this. This is available for Windows and Mac. So the most recent version came out oh, a couple of days ago, so July 16, 2020. I'm going to click on that download icon there. And for me, it's going to show up in the bottom left-hand corner of my Chrome tab. If you use a different browser, it might show up somewhere else. For example, I think Microsoft Edge, there's a pop-up that comes up at the top right-hand corner here. It doesn't really matter. Once you finish downloading it, click on it and install it. I won't show the installation process here as I've showed this quite a few times in previous videos on the channel before. So I'm going to open Active Presenter now as I've already installed it from the Start menu. So I'm going to go to my Start menu. I'm going to type the word Active, A-C-T-I-V-E that comes up with the Active Presenter program. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up here. And before I get started, there are a few things, before I actually record a video, there are a few things I want to set up first. All right, so the first thing is to go to settings here, or preferences. And in the tab at the top, you should be in general. You can choose where you want your location to be. Now, I like to save my files on desktop, but that's completely up to you guys, and you can always change this later on. The screen resolution of my laptop is full HD, which means that it's 1920 or 1920 by 1080 or 1080. I set this size so that when I'm recording full screen, it records the entire screen on my laptop. Now you can choose yours to be whatever you want it to be. Now, after I've done that, I'm going to click on OK here. Then you can choose from templates here. I don't normally do this. I simply go to record video straight away. And from here, we need to change a few more settings. When this window pops up, you're going to have two options in the recording area here, either full screen or custom area. Now, full screen, as I've said before, it will record the entire screen of your laptop or PC custom you can actually draw a specific area or lock it to an application. So let's say I wanted to only record a Chrome tab. I could do lock to application and then from the drop down list, I can choose Chrome tab. But for this video, I'm going to do full screen. Uh, I can turn my webcam on and off from here as it is now it is off. If I click on that, that will turn it on. I have blocked mine so you won't see anything. And from the drop down list next to the webcam, you can actually select the webcam you want. So if you have a USB camera attached to your laptop, you probably have two webcams here. As I don't have two, um, a USB camera attached, I only have one. The same thing goes for the microphone. Again, we can turn this on and off. So to turn it off, 
tap on the icon to turn it back on, tap on the same icon. And from the drop down list, you can actually choose the microphone you want. So in my case, I'm going to use Samson C01U as my input microphone and not the Realtek audio one. If you also want to record uh, system audio, so all those game room videos you see um, on YouTube, this is a program I use for that. This allows me to record myself through my microphone and record all the sound coming from my friends as well. When you finish with that, you simply hit record and you're good to go. That's it. So I'm going to now click on record. Three, two, one, and move my mouse around on screen. Maybe even play my intro video there. Let's close that just so we have something recorded. When I'm finished recording now, let's say I've recorded a whole five, 10 minutes worth of video. I can go down here near the clock, so the notification area, and I'm gonna click on the active presenter icon. It's gonna come up with this mini window here, and from here, I'm gonna actually select stop. When I select stop, it takes me back to the program, but instead of just allowing me to save the video, it actually allows me to edit the video. As some of you can probably tell, this program looks very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint or to any PowerPoint program. Um, on the left here, we actually have a slide, and on that slide, we have a video. Now, if I press play, which is that tiny green icon here, or preview in this case, it's going to start playing back. Now, from here, I can actually do quite a few things. So let's just say I wanted to get rid of the beginning of the video. I can simply drag that there and using that green, that tiny green icon before the darker green icon I can click and I can drag. And I can use some of the tools here to cut in a specific way. This one allows me to cut range. So the range would simply be from this green icon from this green start here to the pinkish orangey one here. If I do that, it's going to get rid of everything that was in that section. So this is where that video editing comes in really handy. I can also, for example, go to transitions here. And the transitions I tend to use in my videos is the zoom transition, simply because I think it's, it's really simple. It doesn't really play too much trickery on the eyes. And it's just really clear. As this is a quick overview of the software, I won't be showing you everything the software can do, but just some of the things I think are really important and you can get good quality videos from. So because this is essentially a PowerPoint-ish program and you have slides, a really good thing is that you don't have to record your entire video in one session. I mean, you never have to do that in any program anyway. Most people, I'm assuming, would record snippets. So they would record the first two minutes, the first three minutes, stop, go back and record the rest of it. Now, this is really handy because I can now, from here, after having my one slide in, go and record another video. So if I go to the section here in the home, in the home tab, there's going to be a section that says record video. I click on that and I can do record video here. That window is going to pop up again. I'm going to do full screen. I'm going to start. I'm going to hit record again. And it's going to do exactly like it did before move my mouse around on screen a bit and let's go to stop recording and what happens it takes me back into this PowerPoint uh, user interface here but now I have two videos I have the one I did originally and the one I just did so this is really good because this way I can edit all the snippets I've done in one place in one go and when I'm finished I can just export another handy trick I've used this for is to actually add my intro and outro to my YouTube videos. So let's just say this is a project I'm working on. I've recorded everything now. I need to add my intro to this. So to do this, the easiest way I've found is to insert a new slide. So on the home tab, go to new slide and I'll choose blank. I'll move this first slide number one here down. So this, so that empty blank one, so that blank one now becomes slide one. I'm going to then go to insert. 
I'm going to choose video and I'm going to choose from file. When I choose from file, it's going to take me to wherever you've saved your files. And I'm going to say uh, YouTube intro. And now that's going to be on that slide there as a video. And I can go ahead and do the same thing for outro. So what I've done in most cases is simply copy. So right click, copy, click on that last one or in that uh, white space there and click paste. So now I have the video at the beginning and at the end. So I have an intro here and an outro here. Now there is a paid version of the software, which I don't think most people need, but let's just say, let me show you what one of the paid um, features are. I click on the audio here. And in most cases, I think my audio is normally really low. So I then move up to the adjust volume here. I click on that and I click here to adjust the audio to 150%. And as you can see, the audio here gets larger. Now, if I wanted to do like a really nice effect, like a zoom in effect, here we go. I clicked on that and it tells me that this is a feature that's locked. And if I use this feature, a watermark will be added to my video. I don't like watermarks on my video, so I'll leave that just as it is. Um, a way to get around this, which I've found, is actually to export this audio. So I can do right click on the audio here, export to file, and that will give me an MP3 file, I believe. And I can then edit that in Audacity. Audacity is a free audio editing program as well. Okay, so now back in Active Presenter, I've recorded my two clips here. Let's say I wanted to add a transition. I've shown how to do that, but let's do that one more time. So this video has a transition. This one doesn't. I can go to transitions here at the top. I can click on the one I want. Let's just click on that one and move this along. And from the pop-up, you can actually see how long it will take. So this is going to be roughly two seconds there. So on the intro of the video, it's going to have a two second swipe. There we go. And for this one, it's going to have a zoom. All right. Now that we've done these things, one of the other important things I think I want to show you guys is how to export the video. So you simply go to the export tab here at the top, choose video. Now you can choose YouTube, but I prefer to have the MP4 video saved to my PC so I can then either go and edit it somewhere else or upload it to YouTube or share it with someone else. And this makes my life really easy. I click on video here and here are some of the settings I think everyone should try and match if you're going for optimal quality. Video size set to 100, well 100%. The width of your video should be whatever your screen resolution is. So whatever you recorded the video at is what you should probably leave it at. Frame rate, I think this program only does 30 frames per second, but I'll just leave that at 60 anyway. Quality is 100, so that's 100% quality, so it won't compress anything. Audio channels, stereo, that means it should come through both left and right. My microphone does allow me to record audio um, through two channels, left and right, so I'll do that. Most microphones and laptops probably don't do that, but this doesn't really matter that much. Sample rate, the normal sample rate is normally between 41, sorry, 44, thousand to 46 or 48,000. So leave this as it is. And bit rate, I choose the highest bit rate just so the audio quality is really good and there shouldn't be any issues. And for audio format, sorry, for output format, I choose MP4 as this is a really popular format and most video editors can handle this. And I can also upload this directly to YouTube without having to do anything else. If you want to change the output location of your file simply click on browse and for me i'm going to choose desktop that's where i send everything because it's just really easy to work with stuff when it's saved on desktop you click open and when i'm finished changing all of this i can simply click ok to start exporting the video as you can see there there we go let's just wait for this to finish it shouldn't take too long you finish exporting your video this is what you'll see. I'll pop up saying the video exported successfully 
and would you like to view the output now? I'm going to choose now because I know where my video is. I can go there and play it whenever I want. I don't need to watch it now particularly. So those are just some of the basics there for Active Presenter 8. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment on the video below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you. Bye-bye.